my dear students, uh, very good afternoon to all of you. Uh, first, uh, let us go through what we have done in the last two sessions. In the first session, I have mentioned the importance of what discrete mathematical structures in computer and engineering and technology. I highlighted the places actually where discrete mathematical structures are used as tools, right, to serve problems in computer engineering, especially in uh, data structures, in the formal languages, in programming languages, etc. So, thereafter I gave a brief introduction to discrete mathematics. So, what is discrete mathematics? What are the features of discrete mathematics? What are the topics to be studied in discrete mathematics? So, all these I have uh, mentioned. Uh, to continue our discussion, we started with the a we started with the basics of what set theory. To begin, we have begun the first chapter that is unit number 1 set theory. Uh, we have uh, listed the various uh, basic terminologies of set starting from uh, the definition of a set, subsets, proper subsets, equal sets, then null set, complement of a set, etcetera. Then I explained you the various uh, operations one can perform on what sets like union, intersection, difference operator, complement, then what symmetric difference operator and so on. I also explained that these set operators can be explained by using what membership table also by using a Venn diagram approach. Uh, membership table where we will use what binary numbers we have seen that. And then I also uh, imparted to you some of the counting principles normally we will use in uh, problems involving what counting like uh, addition rule, multiplication rule, uh, combination rule and what permutation rule. So, thereafter in the last class we discussed a few elucidated examples just to understand all the set operators and then the counting principles. Today I thought it is uh, better to consider a tutorial on what set theory. So, whatever we had done, so we are going to have a tutorial on the same. So, later I would like to introduce you one more uh, counting principle what is called uh, inclusion exclusion principle. So, this is uh, today's plan of what lecture. So, before that I want to inform you the prescribed textbook for this course. This is uh, discrete and uh, combinatorial mathematics by R P Grimaldi P S N uh, publications 5th edition 2004 although 6 and 7 that have come in the market. So, this is considered as prescribed if you want you can look into, look into the latest textbook. Also I listed few of the reference books although there are plenty of books available on this topic. Uh, if you wish you can always go through the reference books. So, first uh, we shall uh, consider a discussion on what the solution of this problem. This is the De Morgan law A intersection B, A intersection B whole complement is what A complement union B complement. So, to construct the membership table as I informed we have to use binary numbers. So, normally we use the number 1. So, when I set x is equal to 1 this means what the element under question is present in the set A as well as it is present in the set B. Now, x is equal to 0 means x is not in the set A and also x does not belong to B. Remember 1 means present in the set, 0 means the element absent in the set. Now, let us construct the membership table. So, the first column A B then A intersection B then A intersection B whole complement. So, all these uh, headings are required. So, I listed in the first row. Then now, because as we, as we have got two sets A and B, so the membership table totally it will consist of what? 4 rows, totally it will consist of 4 rows. Why 4 rows? The reason behind that because when I have when I have only one set and an element, only two choices element either belong to the set or element not belonging to the set. So, since I got two sets A and B, so total choices will be what? 4, total choices will be 4. So, I consider these values 1, 1, 1, 0. 0 1 then what 0 0. Now, when I mention 1 1 1 this means that x belongs to A, x also belongs to B. So, because x belongs to A, x belongs to B, we know that A intersection B consists of what only element which are present in both the sets A and B. Therefore, we'll write the symbol 1 here. Now, here x is belong to A, but x is not a member of what B. Therefore, there is no way x will belong to A intersection B. So, we will put the number 0. 
the same reason I can give for writing 0 here. Now, the last one says when x not in A and it is not in B, it cannot be expected to figure in A intersection B. So, therefore, what? By we will put the by number 0 here. Now, I have to take the complement. Now, complement means what? We told you complement of a set means all elements not in the set A. For example, A complement means all the elements of the universal set which are not present in the set A. So, therefore, as far as membership values are concerned, I write while counting the while co computing the complement of a set, we have to convert what 1 into 0 and 0 into 1. So, this is the membership table for the set A intersection B complement. Now, coming to the right hand side. Now, we need to compute the membership values for A complement and B complement. Now, so 1 x belongs to A. So, x will not be in A complement. So, it is 0 written here. Then x belongs to A 1 again 0. Now, here x is not in the set A. Therefore, it will be present in the complement of A. So, I have put the number 1 here. So, same also here. Similarly, I have computed the membership values of what? The set B complement. Now, we know that how to compute uh, a, co a union A complement union B complement. As far as union operator is concerned, yesterday I mentioned it is very simple to remember. Please remember as far as membership table construction is concerned. So, 0, 0 means it is 0. Otherwise, it is always what? 1. So, here we have we have found these values 0 1 1 1. Now, compare these two column that is the 1 this one membership values of A intersection B whole complement and membership values of A complement union B complement. We find that the membership values are what same. We find that membership values are same. Therefore, we can conclude that the De Morgan law holds good for two sets A and B. Now, another problem I have considered now involving three sets A, B and C. Now, this is called the distributive law. This is called the distributive law. A intersection B union C is what? A intersection B union A intersection C. This property is similar to what in the case of numbers. A into B plus C equals what? A into B plus what? A into C. This property we know exists in number. Same existing here also with respect to what? Union and intersection operator. Again, I have to construct the membership table of what left hand side set expression and also the and also for the right hand side expression then to compare these two based on that if both these two set ident set expressions have same membership values then I can claim that these two sets are what one and the same usual. So, 1 means x belongs to A, 0 means what x does not belong to B. Now, let us construct the membership table. Now, since we are working with three sets A, B and C, so total number of options we will have is what? 8. This uh, this uh, this is similar to the experiment. Suppose, if I consider uh, formation of what? Three character binary strings. I repeat, suppose the experiment consists of forming three character binary string. We know that the binary numbers are what? Either 0 or 1. Totally how many binary numbers we can form? And we know that there are three characters, each character having two options, either 0 or 1. So, total number of options will be 8. So, totally we can construct what 8 binary, binary numbers of each of each what 3 character of length. So, same I considered here A, B, C the heading represents, then consider all these options. Now, now first uh, for B union C, we know that how to compute B union C, very simple wherever in B and C it is 0, I will put the number 0. You see for example here, it is 0 here, it is 0 here. So, therefore, I will write the number 0. I told you B union C construction depends on the following. 0, 0 means what? 0. Now, here also I have 0, then 0. So, it is 0. Otherwise, it is always what? 1. You can notice that every I written 1 except at uh, these two places. Understood how to construct the membership values for B union C? Now, I have to take the intersection of what A and B union C. Now, intersection concern what I told you. So, it is what 1, 1 means 1, otherwise it is always 0. So, 1 here it is 1. So, I will put the number 1 here, second row also 1 here, then 1 here. So, 1 here. Now, 1 here, then 1 here. So, I will put the 1 here. Now, whereas rest you can notice here, here it is 0 and 1. So, it is 0. 0, 1. So, it is 0, 0, 0. It is 0. So, the membership values of the set expression A intersection B and C, it will have only 3 ones and followed by what? zeros. The 3 1 corresponds to 
the individual assignments of A, B and C 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0 and what 1, 0, 1. Now, we shall proceed to construct the truth table of what the, the membership table of the next one namely A intersection B union what A intersection C. For this I need to construct the membership table of what A intersection B also A intersection C then I to take their union. So, just to simplify the purposes I set x as what A intersection B and y as what A intersection C for the sake of what convenience. Now, you can notice here I construct this is the membership table for x x means A intersection B. So, again 1 1 means what 1 see 1 1. So, I will write the number 1 here also 1 1. So, it is 1. Now, 1 0 will be what 0 0 1 will be what 0 everywhere it will be 0 except wherever I find what 1 1 1 1. Similarly, I can find the membership table for A intersection C that is Y look at here A C x belongs to A, x belongs to C. So, x belongs to A intersection C. So, I will put the number 1 and here also you can find that x belongs to A, x belongs to C. So, I written the number 1 at all the other places it is always what 0. This is very much similar to your uh, Boolean multiplication operator 1 into 1 is 1, 1 into 0 is 0, 0 into 1 is 0, 0 into 0 is 0. So, this is the membership table for x and y we have calculated. Now, we need to proceed to calculate to find the membership values of what the set x union y. Now, how to find x union y? In x and y wherever it is 0 we will write 0 you see 0 0 is 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0. So, wherever you have got zeros in both x and y here also you will find what 0 otherwise it is always what 1 right. Now, comparing the membership values of this set and the previous one there also we notice that earlier first we had 3 ones followed by what zeros. Here also first we have what 3 ones followed by 0. Therefore, what we find that these two sets have what same membership values. So, therefore, what the distributive, distributive law holds good understood how to construct the membership table of a set identity using 1 and 0. The same type of problems we can even uh, exhibit by using what Venn diagram approach. Now, for example, I consider the same problem here distributed law. Now, I would like to use uh, Venn diagram approach for the same. Now, here I have to draw I have consider this rectangular portion represents what the universal set. Now, this set sub represents what A, this one, this red, this circular region represent the set A and this circular region represents the set B. Now, this one this portion represent what the set C. Now, first uh, the normally we give prominence to one within the parenthesis. So, first I need to construct B union C. So, I have to color what B union C or shade B union C. How to shade B union C? I have to color what both the sets B and C. So, this green color region the region colored by what green color represents the set B union C understood how to shade B union C all you have to do color both B and C or shade both B and C. So, this is for what this is the Venn diagram for B union C. Now, I have to consider intersection with A. Now, I have to consider intersection of what A and what B union that is uh, this is here it is A please note here right here it is A. Now, this portion is what B union C. Now, what is the common portion to A and B union C? You can notice that this portion, this portion is what common to A and B union C. Am I right? So, if I shade this, I will get the following. So, this is the portion green color region portion is for what? A intersection B union C. That is A intersection B union C stands for the common portion to what? To the set A and B union C. Here you can notice very well. So, this is the circular region A. I am explaining once again. This is for what B? This is for what C? I want common portion to what? A and B union C. So, therefore, this portion. Okay. Now, what you do? We will proceed to construct the members uh, to truth table uh, the Venn diagram for the other one. Now, A intersection C. So, this blue color region represent what 
A intersection C, I have colored what? What is A intersection C? All portion common to what? A and C. So, this is a portion common to A and C which I colored using blue color. So, I got A intersection C. Then A intersection B is a common portion to what? A and B. This is the portion common to what? A and B because this is A and this is B. So, common portion to A and B is what? This blue color region. Now, I have to take what? Union of what? These two. If I take the union of these two, I will get back what? The same which one which I have had for A intersection, B union C. Therefore, we can claim that that membership table uh, and what? Venn diagram road both establishes the distributive law. Understood all of you? The same thing, the same problem even uh, even you can, we can even we can even give you a mathematical procedure for that. We shall consider a discussion on this later. So one more problem I considered by using the Venn diagram approach. Now here, see when wherever whenever we change from one environment to another environment, we ask for what is called a compatibility, right? So here compatibility is the intersection and what symmetric difference operator. We know B plus C means all elements either in B or in C, but not in both B and C. Now, I am asking for a compatibility. Do I have? See, similar thing I had for intersection and union. I like to find out can I have a similar uh, property when I, when I uh, convolute a intersection with what plus operator. So, what you do? We shall try to find the uh, same by constructing the Venn diagram. Now, this blue color region wherever I use blue color represents what B plus C that white portion represents what B intersection C. Actually what is B plus C? We know all elements either in B or in C but not in what both, but not in both means B intersection C. This portion is what excluded from coloring. So, that blue color region represents what B plus C. Okay. Now, I need to take the intersection of what A with what B plus C. Now, what are the common portion to the set A? This is the this is the set A and this portion what B. Now, what are the common portion to A and this? This one and then what? This. So, this one, this is the common portion to what A and B plus C. So, I got A intersection B plus C is the one where I colored this portion by using the blue color. Understood? How I have constructed uh, the Venn diagram for A intersection B plus C. All of you understood? It is very simple. First construct B plus C. All you should know the meaning of B plus C. If you know the meaning of B plus C, immediately you can know it. You should remember thoroughly. It is either B or C, but not both. That means this portion to be excluded. This is B intersection C. Exclude that, share the remaining, you will get B plus C. Now, take the intersection of what this set with A. What are the common portion? This two. So, I done it. So, similarly, now I can I will construct the members, I will construct the truth table of what, sorry, uh, Venn diagram of what A intersection B, this is a common portion to what A and B, am I right? This is a common portion to A and B, then this is a common portion to what A and C, this is a set A, this is a set C, common portion to A and C is what this. Now, I need to find A intersection B plus A intersection C. What is A intersection B plus A intersection C? It is the set of all element either present in A intersection B or present in A intersection C, but not in what? Both, but not in both. So, this is the definition of what? A intersection B plus A intersection C. Now, what we know A intersection B, also we know what is A intersection B. Now, what is the portion common to these two? A intersection B and A intersection C is what? The common portion to A, B and C. That is A intersection what? B intersection C. In fact, this portion, this portion is actually what? A intersection B intersection C and this portion must be what? Discarded. This portion must be discarded. This is what we have done. You can notice here. I have not colored this. So, I will get what? The same. This is the Venn diagram for A intersection B plus A intersection C. Now, comparing this Venn diagram with the one that we had seen earlier, this one. Now, these two have got what? Same Venn diagram. Therefore, what? We can claim that yes, the compatibility property exists between intersection and what? Plus operator. 
So one more problem on uh, construction of what Venn diagram. Now it is the other way. Earlier I worked with intersection and plus. Now I would like to work with plus and what intersection. Solve the logical and says intersection and plus same as telling what plus and intersection. Anyhow we shall verify whether this holds good here. A plus B intersection C. It is same as what A plus B intersection what A plus C. Now first begin with we shall uh, find the Venn diagram for B and C. The common portion to what B and C is this one, right? This represents B intersection C. Now with A, A plus B intersection C. What is A plus intersection? A plus B plus A. A plus B intersection C. All portion, all element, either in A or in B intersection C, but not in what? Both, but not in both A and B intersection C. A and A intersection C. So you'll find that. So this is a portion, what? A plus A plus B, A plus B intersection. C. Will you agree with me? This is B intersection C. I want to find all portion. Maybe I think I have done a mistake probably. You can correct it. I think uh, find out whether this one can be included because I have included it because this is common to what A and B intersection. I think there is a mistake here. I hope you can uh, work out this the using the procedure explained earlier. Otherwise, I will come back to you in the next class. I have given you some more problems on uh, Using the Venn diagram approach, find out whether A minus of what B union C equals what A minus B intersection A minus C. Now, so these properties we can always use uh, mathematical procedure also, right? Earlier we have used a membership table, now Venn diagram approach. Now we shall use a mathematical procedure to establish what the various properties. The first one is the De Morgan law, A union B whole complement, A intersection A complement intersection B complement. Now, how to do the proof? We know that equal sets means where each set is contained in the other. For example, I want to show that these two are what equal. I must show that this set is a subset of this and also this set is a subset of this because equal sets contain exactly what same element. Therefore, I need to show that all the elements of this set are present in this set also and at the same time all the elements of this set are present in A union B whole complement because we are working with uh, sets uh, not knowing much about the elements. So, the procedure usually consists of what starting with an arbitrary element. Let x belongs to A union B, B an arbitrary element. Now, x is a member of what A union B whole complement. Therefore, I cannot expect x to figure in what A union B because it is in the complement. So, it will not be present in A union B. Now, when can we say x not in A union B? This will happen only when x not in A and also what x not belonging to B. Otherwise, x will be in A union B. So, if x does not belong to A union B means what x does not belong to A and x does not belong to B. Because x not in A not in B immediately it follows that x belongs to A complement and then what x belongs to B complement. Now, it is a common element of what A complement and uh, B complement. Therefore, x belongs to what A complement intersection B complement because we have uh, started with an arbitrary element. So, I conclude that this set A union B whole complement is a subset of what A complement intersection B complement. Understood? How I got this uh, mathematical proof? Please remember, whenever you want to show one set is a subset of the other, all you need to do start with an arbitrary element from uh, one side. Say x uh, I have considered here, and then prove that x also belongs to the right hand side, as I have done here. Now let us work with the from the right hand side. Now let y belongs to a complement intersection what b complement. Let y belongs to a complement and B complement again be an arbitrary element. Now, what do you mean? Now, y is a common element because it is present in both the set. So, y belongs to A complement and also what? Y belongs to B complement. Am I right? So, therefore, I cannot expect in A also it cannot be expected to figure in B because it is present in their complement. So, when y not in A, y not in B, this means what? Y does not belong to A union B. Now, if y does not belong to A union B, then where will it be present? Only in the complement of what? A union B. So, we have produced the following. We have started with that what? 
y belongs to a complement intersection b complement we have shown that y belongs to what a union b whole complement because y is an arbitrary element we can conclude that a complement intersection b complement is a subset of what a union b whole complement i can give one reason why say uh, whenever we want to prove some mathematical results in geometry say pythagoras theorem all to want to prove a pythagoras and what normally we do we will start with an arbitrary right angle triangle some some student uh, starting with a big right angle triangle few may be with a smaller one or uh, some with reasonable size but what is the procedure to start with a right angle triangle and then proving the pythagoras theorem a situation here it is similar to that very much similar to that starting with an arbitrary element now from 1 and 2 what is 1 earlier i have shown that a union b whole complement is a subset of this now i have shown a intersect a complement intersection b complement is a subset of this so therefore what from 1 and 2 we conclude that a union b whole complement is same as what a complement intersection b complement understood all of you so we can use a mathematical approach or venn diagram approach or membership approach to prove what set identities okay understood all of you i i have brought some uh, few problem very much uh, similar to this this is the other form of what de morgan law a complement union b complement equals what a intersection b whole complement the second problem is a minus b equal to what a intersection b complement the last one is the distributive law a union b intersection c equals what a union b intersection what a union c right so please try to solve this problems if you cannot maybe when we meet next time i'll give you a proof of one of this on the board now continuing our discussion uh, now on uh, duality concept i explained uh, previous class that union and intersection operator are examples of what duals of one another because they possesses exactly contrasting behaviors now we shall try to give a formal definition of what dual formula now let me start with the set expression say x what is x x consists of what a number of sets and what few set operator that's called a set expression or a formula involving operators such as union intersection complement etc and some of the other sets now the dual of x may be defined as the following to obtain the dual all you have to do is just replace what union by intersection and intersection by what union so this will give you the dual also if an expression contains some special symbols like u universal set this must be replaced by what null set that is why and vice versa understood how to find dual of a formula it is very simple to find the dual of a formula all you have to do is the following namely wherever intersection is present replace it replace it by union and replace union by what intersection for example a in, what is the dual of a intersection a complement intersection b now i got two intersections okay now i'll replace intersection by what union and intersection by what union so this is the dual of what this understood as i explain to obtain dual replace intersection by union and union by intersection u by phi and phi by u now what is the dual of uh, universal set that is a union a complement so u will be replaced by what phi this union will be replaced by intersection understood one more example on finding the dual now what is the dual of x union x intersection y union a complement intersection b is the following name b union to be replaced by intersection intersection is replaced by union union is replaced by intersection understood so this is the dual of the above similarly i can find the dual of what a as this by just uh, following the procedure understood all of you how to find the dual right now after all, after discussion of all this we shall uh, consider a discussion on the following type of many time we'll consider Uh, problems involving a big formula huge formula and uh, its simplification now i considered uh, this problem here i want to simplify a intersection b minus a by using only laws of set theory not by using venn diagram approach or membership table approach i have to use only the 
loss of the set theory. We have seen earlier number of what loss concerning the set operators. Now, to begin with consider A intersection B minus A. We know what is B minus A. B minus A means what? All elements present only in B, not at all in A. That is what B minus A. So, B minus A is same as what? B intersection A complement. So, B minus A is the set of all element X belongs to B, but X does not belong to A. So, X belongs to A complement. So, it is a common element of B and A complement. So, e B minus A is B intersection A complement by definition of the different set. Okay. Now, what I have done? I know that commutative law always holds good. A intersection B is same as what B intersection A. I just uh, reverse these two. This is by commutative law. What is commutative law? A intersection B is same as what B intersection A. Then I use throughout I got the intersection operator. Throughout I got the intersection operator. So, I can uh, modify it as A intersection A complement intersection B. This is by associative law. We know that associative law holds good with respect to intersection operator. Now, what is the common element between A and A complement? Nothing. There is no element common to what A and its complement. This is a intersection A complement is always an empty set, that is null set. In the null set intersection B, any element common to null set and B, it is always what null. So, if I simplify A intersection B minus A, it will come out to be what empty set. Here I use the only loss. Maybe even you try to construct the membership table for this or a Venn diagram, possibly you will end up with a null set. I leave this as an exercise uh, at least uh, on constructing the membership table of this. So, another problem on uh, simplification by using uh, the loss of what set theory. So, this is a problem that I considered A intersection B union, A intersection B intersection C complement intersection D then union of what A complement intersection B. I want to simplify this expression by using the loss. So, because A intersection B is present here and also what here, just to simplify things, I have set x is equal to what A intersection B and y as what C complement intersection D. Okay. X means A intersection B, y means C complement intersection D. Now, here I am going to use the absorption law, which I mentioned uh, yesterday in the class. What is absorption law? X union X intersection Y is what X? this law is required here. So, I mentioned here in the beginning itself. Now, if I substitute for x and y here, what happens? If I substitute for x here, so okay, I got x, then union, then uh, A intersection B is what x, C complement intersection D is what y, union A complement D, this is retained. Now, using the absorption law, which I mentioned, x union x intersection y is what x. Therefore, x union x intersection y I can replace simply it by what x. This is what I have done here. So, x union x intersection y equals to what x. So, it reduces to x union of what a complement intersection b. Now, what will I do? I will substitute for x here. I will substitute for x here. So, x what is x now? a intersection b a union what a complement intersection b after the substitution of what x. Now, what will I do? I will apply now the distributive law. I will apply the distributive law, law of distribution and I will expand it. I will expand it. Now, what happens? If I expand it, I will use this formula which normally we use in the case of what numbers. Now, what is A plus B into C plus D? We know how to expand it. It is A into C plus A into D plus B into C plus what? B into D. Now, here instead of plus, I got what? Intersection operator. Instead of dot, I got what union operator. Yes or no? Following the same and applying this, right? What will I get? I'll get A union A complement, then what? A union B, then B union A complement, then B union B. This is what I'm going to get after I expand it by using maybe this uh, formula, taking intersection as plus and union as dot. Now we have these properties by universal law. A union A complement is always what U, I have mentioned. A union A complement is the universal set. By item potent law, B union B is what? It is B only. Therefore, I will write this as what A, I will write this as B in the next step. So, 
what will happen if I do this exercise this is what I am going to get ok. Now anything common between u and x is always what x because x is a subset of u intersection of u and x is always what x. So u intersection a union b it will be what a union b only this is retine b union a complement intersection what b. Now by using through what I got what here also here one intersection here one intersection I can use simplify it in the next state by using the associate law what will I do I brought this b here I brought this b here so it becomes a union b intersection b intersection of what b union a complement this is by using the associative law so it becomes what b intersection b union a complement once again uh, invoking the absorption law I get b intersection b union a complement is actually what b. So the expression with which we started the expression with which we started this one is actually equal to what b the same you can do it maybe by constructing the membership table of course membership table will involve what 16 rows because there are four uh, symbols here a b c d so if you want to prove or simplify like this we have to if you want to use the membership table it requires the construction of what a membership table were 16 rows nobody will do it when uh, there is when nobody is a tedious process so normally we do not uh, advise to do it so therefore in a such a situation we have to depend on only on what the last whenever we work with either two sets or three set we do not mind if you use the membership table or Venn diagram but when a problem involving more than what three sets we have to use the laws of the set theory this is what I have done here understood all of you. Now if you have understood all this I have given you one more problem on a simplification A complement union B complement union of what A intersection B intersection C complement try to simplify it in the same way I had done by using the loss of the set theory. Now what we do we will come to an important uh, part namely accounting principle inclusion exclusion principle sometime we include at times we exclude. So this is a formula for what two set this is a formula for two set so this stands for so what is this symbol this symbol stands for this is called order of A union B it is called the number of elements in A union B. So when I write this number two lines in between that what the set that means what it is the number of elements in A union B what this principle says is the following that the number of elements in A union B equals number of elements in A plus number of elements in B minus number of elements in what A intersection B understood inclusion exclusion well for two set order of A union B equals order of A plus order of B minus of what order of A intersection B how this formula has come up we will try to answer to this. Now this portion this portion represents yellow one represent the set A and this portion represent the set B and this portion the green colored one represents what A intersection B. The here the problem is to count how many elements are there in A and how many elements are in B. Now what happens normally when you count the number of elements in what A notice that this number of elements here is counted yes or no when you count the number of elements in the set A we have to count all the element present here that is A intersection B. So if you count the number of elements in B if you count the number of elements in B again this is counted number of elements in A intersection B is counted once for the set A and once for the set B just because I have counted number of elements twice can I consider it once or twice counting is always what only once so therefore that portion that once that I counting whatever I done this is to be deducted. So therefore I get the formula for what cardinal number of A union B equals what cardinal number of A plus cardinal number of B minus of what cardinal number of A inter that is the number of elements same cardinal number of A cardinal number of a set mean the number of elements in the set A. So this is the formula for what two sets understood how this formula has come up all of you. It is because of the logic that number of elements in A intersection B is actually counted twice once for set A and once for the set B. 
Now, for three sets, I can deduce the inclusion exclusion model as follows. That is, uh, order of A union B union C equals what? Order of A plus order of B plus order of C minus of what? Order of A intersection B minus order of A intersection C minus order of B intersection C plus order of what? A intersection B intersection C. So, this is the inclusion exclusion principle for three sets which we can easily deduce by applying the same formula by applying the inclusion exclusion principle for two sets just by taking A union B A as what D. This is what I have done. Take A union B equal to what D. Okay. Then this becomes what? Cardinal number of D union C. Apply that inclusion exclusion principle for two sets. I will get this cardinal number of D plus cardinal number of C minus of cardinal number of D intersection C. Now, substitute for D. Okay. Now, substitute for D and uh, expand once again cardinal number of A plus cardinal number of B minus of what this. Okay. Now, what will I do? I will expand it by using the distributive law. By applying the distributive law, this becomes what A intersection C <coughs> union of what B intersection C. Now, what I will do? Again, consider again consider this as what 1, this as what 1. Once again, applying the inclusion exclusion principle of two sets, I get same as what cardinal number of A plus cardinal number of B minus of this plus this, then minus of what cardinal number of A intersection C plus cardinal number of B intersection C minus of what intersection of what these two. This what I done. Now, what is com common portion to A intersection C and B intersection C? It is the common elements to what all A, B and C. So, therefore, substituting this here, I will get this formula as cardinal number of A union B union C equals to what this. So, this is the inclusion exclusion principle for three sets. Understood? How I have deduced inclusion exclusion principle for three sets. Okay? I will give this exercise to you. Find the similar uh, formula for four sets. Say maybe what is the formula for cardinal number of A union, cardinal number of B union, cardinal number of C union, cardinal number of D. Try to find out a formula for this. Now, what we do? We shall try to consider some elucidated example based on inclusion exclusion principle. Now, take a look at uh, this problem. We have a computer company. It wants to hire 25 programmers to handle system programming jobs and 40 programmers for application programming jobs. Now, of those hired, 10 will be expected to perform both type of jobs. Then the question is, how many programmers must be hired by the company? Understand the problem? I, dig, I repeat again. There is a computer company. It wants to hire programmer for two types of jobs. One is what? System programming jobs and the other application programming jobs. Okay. It is known that 25 programmers can handle system programming jobs, while only 40 programmers are capable of handling application programming jobs. Of course, 10 are expected to uh, do both type of jobs. Then the question is, how many programmers must the company hire? This situation, I can explain like this. Take A and B as the set of all what? Let A and B denote the set of all what? Number of programmers handling the system program job and what application program job respectively. A means what is A? The number A, A is the set of all what programmers who can handle system programming jobs. B means the set of all programmers who can handle application programming jobs. Now, according to the data given, we are given that 25 programmers can handle system programming jobs. So, I will write cardinal number of A as 25 cardinal number of P, it is given to be what 40, because 40 programmers are given to be handling system program then because 10 are expected to do both jobs. So, I will have cardinal number of what A intersection B as 10. Now, what is the problem? Here the problem is to compute the number of programmers who can handle either one of this, either uh, system program jobs or what application program job. So, therefore, the solution consists of finding the cardinal number of what A union B. This I can do it by using the inclusion exclusion principle for two sets. So, if I can if I use that, 
I will find that totally the company must hire what 55 programmers understood. So, by using inclusion exclusion principle we have solved a combinatorial problem like this on job scheduling or job assignment. This situation we can well explain by using the Venn diagram. So, A means A written B written because 10 expected to uh, do both jobs. So, written 10 here. Now, from this Venn diagram it is clear that only 15 programmers can handle what system programming jobs. Please remember 15 exclusively A. So, so only 15 programmers are capable of handling system programming jobs and only 30 programmers can handle what application oriented programming jobs understood all of you. I have uh, one more problem now with uh, three types of what categories. Now, a survey was conducted among 260 college students, a survey was come and conducted among 260 students. The following data were obtained by the surveying survey team. The survey found that 64 students had taken a mathematics course, 94 had taken a computer science course and 58 had taken a business course. 28 had taken both mathematics and business course, 26 had taken mathematics and computer science course, 22 had taken both a computer science and a business course. Of course, 14 students had taken all the three courses, 14 students have registered for all the three courses mathematics, CS and what business. Then the question is how many students were surveyed who had taken none of the three types of courses? Are there any student, right? who have not taken any course at all and how many students have taken only computer science course. People might be interested in a study like this. So, to solve this problem I use the symbols M, C and B. M means mathematics, C means computer science, B means what business. So, M stands for the number of students studying mathematics, C means number of students studying computer science, B means the set of all students studying for business course. Okay. So, based on the data given right, so this is what we have that 64 students studying maths, 94 students studying computer science, 58 studying business and so on. So, from the data I have collected all this. Now, we shall try to show the same by using a Venn diagram because it is given to you that 14 students have taken only what all the three courses, 14 students have taken all the three courses. So, this is the portion common to what M, C and B. So, therefore, in this region I will write the number 14. Okay. Now, we are given that only 26 students have studied what math and computer science, 26 studied mathematics and computer science. So, this I can show what is the portion common to math and computer science, this is the portion common to what math and computer science. So, totally it is 26, already I written 14 here. So, therefore, I will write the number 12 here. Similarly, how many students studied a math and business course? Math and business 28, math and business 28. The portion corresponding to math and business what? This is a portion corresponds to math and business 28, already 14 here. So, we have to write the remaining 14 here. Similarly, we know that uh, only 22 students studied business and uh, computer science course 22. So, 14 will come here 8, right? Now, it is given to you totally 64 students have studied mathematics. Please remember totally 64 students only studied mathematics. So, this total portion is what 64. So, this will come out to only 24. All I need to do add up all this to 14 plus 14 28 plus 12 40. Totally it is 64. So, 64 minus 40 is what 24 are written. Similarly, only 90 students have studied for what? Totally 90 students for computer science of the 90 are written 12, 14 and 8 here. So, this is to be deducted from 90. So, 26 plus 8, 34. If we deduct it from 94, I will get this number as what? 60. Similarly, here business, how many students study business, business uh, so business uh, it is given to you. 58 students have taken for what business course. Okay. Therefore, 58. So, what should I write here? 14 plus 28, 36. So, here it will come out to be what 22. Okay. Right. After filling up all this, after filling up all this, now we can answer to the following question. So, in considering the inclusion exclusion principle for three sets, 
this is this will tell how many students register for either maths or cs or b apply inclusion responsible you will get it to be 154 now totally two students studied were surveyed were 260 so therefore right 260 therefore we will find that 106 students right number of not register for anything is 106 of course how many students register for only computer science looking at the diagram the answer is what 60 understood so today we what we have done we have considered a discussion on tutorial on threat theory and towards the end I explained inclusion responsible we have considered few listed examples on inclusion responsible when we meet next time I will introduce the concept of what discrete probability and how inclusion principle, inclusion principle is used to solve problems in discrete probability we shall see in the next week thank you for watching